in the last movie, we learned some great trimming techniques to trim down our actual piece. And in this movie, we're going to add some music to our Chapter 2-9 sequence. So if you're just tuning in right now, you can access the Chapter 2-9 sequence. If you've been following along, feel free to use your own sequence. I was very close to getting it down to 45 seconds. In fact, I broke my own rules and am slightly over. But knowing that I'm over, I'm actually going to trim more a little bit later as we start to deal with transitions and effects. So let's bring in some music. I'm actually going to go to the project panel over here and I'm going to press the tilde key just to make it a little bit bigger. And I would like to create a new bin right away. So I'm going to click on the new bin icon down there on the lower right hand side and just type in the word audio. Since I want to bring in just an audio clip, I'm going to control double click the bin. And inside here, anywhere in a gray area, if you double click, I'm not too interested in listening to the audio right now. So that's why I didn't use the media browser. I want to head to the desktop. And on the desktop, I'm going to go to the metal projects and exercise files where we have an audio track folder. Your audio is going to be watermarked just to let you know while I'm going to use the full unwatermarked version just for demonstration purposes. We just don't have the rights to distribute this file. So I'm going to select it. I'm going to press open. So it gets inside right inside my bin. And for me to bring that in the source monitor, just select it and double click it. And we can see it here inside the source monitor ready to go. I'm just going to press the L key to play forward a bit. And I just press K to stop. So I really do like the audio from the beginning. And I need to trim it to be around the length of my project. The great news is I can actually do this in the timeline. And I don't need to set in and out points on my audio clip right now. So you're seeing the audio's waveform. What I'm going to do is just drag it by the audio only. If you try to drag it by the audio itself here, it's just not going to happen. So you want to drag it by the audio only and drag it straight into your timeline. Right, so I'm going to drag it to the A1 track underneath V1. And I'm going to release my mouse. And then I'm going to use the backslash key so I can see the audio. I can see that it's a lot longer. I want to make sure to position my playhead just after the last clip in the timeline. So an easy way to do that is just to shift click the playhead. Just drag it to this position right here. That last clip right to snap to it. If I select the audio's end point, and I want to make sure to do that with the overwrite trim in this particular instance. So I'm going to control click to get the red trim tool. I'm going to click to select that edit point. There's something called an extend edit. And what it's going to do is just move the audio to be where my playhead is. And if I press the E key, it achieves that. Okay, you just want to make sure you do that with the right arrow. You can always press control Z to undo. I'm now going to hit the backslash key to fit everything to the window. And if I move to the beginning of my timeline using the func function left arrow on my laptop or home on an extended Mac. So things are looking pretty good. I want to do two things. I want to lower the audio because it's way too loud. If I press the space bar, I want you to let you know that it's going almost close to zero dB, which is a no-no. So whenever you see audio go red, no-no. I'm going to go here and actually expand my audio track. And I'm just going to, with that expansion, just lower this white line. And that's going to lower the decibel level. I'm going to make it about negative 12. I think that's good for this particular piece. Now, if you're in a situation where you're producing some material for a headset or any experience in a headset, your audio workflow is going to be a lot different. But here's some basics of just bringing some stuff in from your pro. Now, the next thing I want to do is just I want to make sure that there's a fade out at the end of this sequence. So if I move right now just close to the end by just clicking up here on the upper bar and then pressing the L key. Audio just kind of cuts off, which I don't want. So how do I create just a slow fade in? One way is you could do, you could actually add a transition, but I prefer to add keyframes in this situation. So with my audio track that we expanded, by the way, you can just drag here manually if it's not expanded. There's a great way to call up the ability to keyframe this line, and that's using the control key on your PC or the command key on a Mac. If I hold down control, while I'm close to this line, and then click on this line, it adds a keyframe. Now, I just need to add another keyframe to create some variable change in my audio. So I'll do that close towards the end. And I'll drag that keyframe that I created by clicking that line all the way to the bottom here. And what I will see is a subtle fade out.
and I have exactly what I want. So here we just learned some basics of audio, the fact of just bringing it into our project, bringing it to the source monitor, and being able to perform an extend edit to get it to the length of our sequence, followed by putting a fade out on that audio.